no, because you can't, you're not citizen yet. No, like, oh, you already knew this. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, Dominga Chaton. If you are new, my name is Dominga, and if you're returning, hi, I have somebody new with me, and I'm going to interview her today, and you guys a little bit of info about citizenship, and about green cards, and about more mental oh. health, and the struggle. <laughs> so if you want to hear about that, stay tuned, and we will get started. my sweet mates right here Hi. so we we share a bathroom and we work together uh, it's bastante, it's bastante. and oh, it's dang. It's <laughs> oh, and so okay so first just tell them who you are and like why you wanted to join in the, in the first place okay so my name is Ewanzi Basantes and I joined around uh, February 23rd and the main reason was because I wanted to be independent. I didn't want to be um, not like a bother to my parents, but I just wanted to be um, something that they don't have to worry about. And I joined for like stability. Also, the citizenship status goes quicker with that. And, and that's why I joined. But mental health, there's something about it that is very intriguing like how the people think and why they think that way that it made me chose that one specifically okay so that's one of my questions that i want to get to and then backing up really quick a lot of my um people that watch me have questions on citizenship and kind of how that goes could you give a rundown you can tell them like where you're from and just like a rundown of okay. kind of how it works because i'm sure there's a lot more to it but just like okay. a small rundown so i was i was born in ecuador and when I came here, I was because of my mom's job. They gave us like a visa to work, and they sponsored us while we were here. But the whole process of a citizenship in the uh, Air Force is kind of—it's not hard, but many people don't know anything about it. Many supervisors will ask, will, will tell you to just go to a legal office or to talk with other people, but it's completely the opposite and you just have to go and google it which is kind of awkward for citizenship that you have to google it mm -hmm. but there's the website that is going to tell you everything about it if you don't know it's going to be difficult but if you have somebody to guide you on the steps that you have to go it's going to be more simpler because it took me longer than I, it was ever meant to uh, mm -hmm. be i could have finished it in tech school but People were like, no, you cannot do it, or oh, it's other people, you have to wait for your first base. You don't really have to wait for shit. For stuff. <laughs> okay, then, okay, so a question I get asked is do you have to be a citizen to join? No. You just have to be a resident. If you're a resident, if you have a green card and a social security, you're good. I'm so, a resident is just having a green card? Yes. Social okay. security, green card, you're good. Did your recruiter know anything about the process of like, did he know like it's fine or like did he say anything or no, or she? Uh, he didn't say anything about it. There's some jobs that you're not gonna be allowed to do because I feel like they don't trust us as much yet. You have to prove yourself, I guess, that you are a good American citizen first and then you can choose those jobs. So there is gonna be a limitation of what can you do and you should check that with your um, recruiter because I was gonna join the Navy first but they lied to me and said that oh you can choose any job and I was going for a specific job I did my ASVAB and I finished and mm. they were like no because you can't you're not citizen yet and I was like oh you already knew this I'm out I'm not gonna be treated that way so they were like yeah yeah come in and then once yeah, you did yeah. everything uh -huh. with them they were like oh but you can't have like these certain jobs uh-huh and i was like but sir i told you that one was the one that i wanted at least wanted to try like give me a chance to try mm -hmm. even if i don't get it give me a chance it was mental health your first pick yes did you put it on your list or how did that go i put it on my list well mine is kind of a weird case because i put it on my list but I only put mental health and that's oh. something that they tell you don't do because yeah. it's gonna be longer and um, I was getting a little bit scared because months were passing and 
nothing happened yet. Mm -hmm. But then I put another one because he was like, oh, just pick another one. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll let you know. Uh, and then right as I was about to turn the, the second one, they said, oh, there is a mental health position. Isn't that crazy? That's literally how, like, mine... Because I did have other jobs on mine, like uh, dental, and I think in personnel or whatever, but my recruiter was like, mm, like, you're not going to get it. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not going to get this job. Oh, he did say, it. like, <laughs> oh, you're not going to get mental health because people that get mental health, they have, like, degrees and they know about it already. They have studied it. Liars. Maybe the, pro yeah, the providers, like, if you're commission, like, if you're an officer or something, but if you're, like, a technician, you're not. Mm -hmm. And that's why... Just know, like, your recruiters don't know everything. And I say that, like, nicely as in, <laughs> yeah, they, they have one, like, they have one job. Like, mine was, like, a maintainer or something like that. Other recruiters could be, like, personnel. They could be personnelist or whatever. But they really just know about their job and just sprinkles of some. Because I don't even think my recruiter, not this one maybe, but another one that I had knew it was a job available. So... Yeah. Mm. What's been the hardest part about either the Air Force or m mental health technician? Or you could do both. The Air Force is that, for example, there's the AFI is very strict, but as, at the same time, it's strict depending on the people surrounding you, mm. like what they allow you to do that is not following the AFI and what they do allow you to do. And they don't know. It's kind of weird. Just talk with your supervisors and with the people that are around you. See what they get away with because <laughs> there's a fine line of what you can and you cannot. And um, what was the other? Like, with like the either Air health? Force or mental health, yeah. Mental health. Uh, don't take the patient stuff home. That's the thing. That's the worst part because you are... Like, for me, I'm very good at being empathetic with the patients and understanding where they're coming from. But at the same time, if I feel too much, I might start, like, feeling like I'm about to cry or something. Right. And that's not good because I'm, I'm here for the patient. Mm -hmm. The patient is not here for me. Exactly. They kind of teach us in tech school about not taking that meant, that emotional baggage. baggage. Yeah. That's kind of... Uh, but, like, that uh, uh, emotional baggage with you back home because a lot of that can start to take its toll on you especially like in my other video i said how we do intakes which are like interviews of them and they give us like their whole background and um and then the providers the psychologists and everything see them later but we get like a whole scope of what they're going through and why they're here and usually if they're seeing mental health it's for something big like because a lot of people are like, I didn't come until now. Like, now is, like, the breaking point. I need to be here. Some people are just um, not, but most of them, I feel like, come because it's, like, the last straw almost. Yes, there's, like, the two kinds of people. The people that are are in their last straw and the people that have, like, a cut in their yeah. finger. And somebody has a paper cut. And paper it cut. Just, and... It's, like, back. <laughs> yeah. Give them a tip for somebody who's trying to be a mental health technician. Because mm. there's not a lot of info out there. There's not. I, when I was when I was coming uh, in the military, I was trying to see what mental health was all about. Yeah. And there was, I think, only one lady that right. had a baby. Yes, I, I saw that. that. <laughs> With the curly hair. With and the curly hair. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's a lot of, well, people call it like glorified, like, Hmm. assistant like computer oh. assistant which is gonna be a lot of what you're gonna do is on a desk and yeah, like admin work it's not gonna be a lot of like physical stuff mm -hmm. but just be up to date to what it is, is the uh, DSM-5 saying and um, know your providers know what they like what they don't like because different providers like different stuff made specifically yeah and get to know your supervisors because they are your gate to the military so as much as you get to know them and they can teach you about it because I had I don't have family in the military like I'm the first one I don't know nothing it's kind of weird sometimes I don't know what's right or what's wrong or why is it it's good to ask why also mm -hmm. because just when they say because it's not enough I need to know why <laughs> and 
even if the the reason is not good, just follow. Like at the military, just just follow what they say. Yeah, as long as it goes with the AFI uh -huh. and they're not gonna AFI. get you in trouble. As long get as you're AFI. in the side of the <laughs> AFI, <laughs> just know that. Just have the AFI right by you. Yeah. So before the last thing, um, if you guys have questions for her specifically, for me, but um, for her specifically too, you can leave them down in the comments below and then maybe we'll do like another one with like questions for you if they have questions about citizenship or just whatever questions for you. Anything. I'm still working on it. I have my test on Tuesday, so good luck. Good luck to yes. you. Um, yes. So if y'all got questions, cause I don't know. So that's why she's here. I know a lot of people have questions about this. They've asked me and I, I have no clue, so um, I didn't have to go through that. So uh, we will go ahead and leave them down in the comments below. And then anything else that you want to uh, say or give tips or just anything, literally. Something that I struggle with is not doing much, especially in this base. People are very isolated and there's not a lot to do outside other than eating and going to the mall. So just get in contact with people, stay connected, get to do stuff. If there's nothing to do, volunteer for stuff. You'll meet people either way. So that, because when you come into the military, it's kind of like you're a little bit alone and isolated from your family and your friends. So getting to know those people that you can count on whenever it's difficult and you can talk to them is good also for your mental health. So don't forget about your mental health. She pretty much just said it. Um, this base has been different, a little different. different. Um, I think especially because I think we're pretty much similar, as in we like to go out and do things with people. They don't really do that here. Um, there's no this is not that kind of base. <laughs> there's, there's like it's, it could be very lonely. So um, definitely have just find people where you guys are there's other bases that are even smaller than this um or whatever but just like she said um, i don't have to reiterate everything she said at all so thank you guys for being here a thank you to my sweet mate um if you guys see that subscribe button and it's still red it means that you <laughs> haven't subscribed so go ahead and do that like it and i will see you guys in the next video we're about to go get tacos or flan or something like that something. So she's my, also another eating buddy. So get yourself eating buddies. Um, and we will see you guys in the next video. Bye. I gotta put me first. I gotta put me first. <laughs> <laughs>